I'm Stephen Foskett, the organizer of Tech Field Day, and we are here in Santa Clara, California for Tech Field Day, November 2016. <clears throat> if you'd like to learn more about Tech Field Day and what we're doing here, I urge you to come to techfieldday.com. You can find a series of videos just like this at youtube.com slash techfieldday. This event brings together a panel of a dozen independent writers and speakers from around the world to meet with interesting enterprise IT technology companies to discuss technologies, to learn about things, to show demos, and to share things with the world. Thanks for watching. Hi guys, I'm Chinmay Manjunath. I'm part of the engineering here at Coyocity. Today, I'll be showing you a physical server protection feature that we, uh, made, uh, that we released for general availability a few weeks back. Uh, and not all, as you guys already know, not all the servers in the data center are virtualized. Some of them still are running on bare metal. You know to get the complete protection of the data center, so it's very important for physical server protection. So I'll just jump right into the demo. So go to the sources that you guys already saw, and then uh, so with VMware backup, so we use the VADP APIs to get the snapshots, to get the incremental backups, etc. But on the physical servers, so we built our own agent, so which is running as a persistent agent. So which does a couple of things. One is on the Windows side, it integrates with the VSS uh, subsystem to get the quiet snapshots, uh, you know, application consistent snapshots, etc. And then we built our own CVT driver, a change block tracking driver, to get incremental backups. And also for Linux, we have a, a source side dedupe that is built into the agent. So the agents can be downloaded and deployed from here. So once it's downloaded and deployed. So it can be registered, the physical server can be registered as a source right here. So today I'm going to kind of show registering a Windows server. There it is. So and the physical servers, this is the source that was registered. So it pulls up, it talks to the agent, pulls up all the volume information on that physical server, and it shows up right here. So you have to manually install the agent, or can you deploy the agent remotely? So the first uh, installation is manual, either through the SCCM software or the likes. But subsequently, whenever there is an upgrade, et cetera, so it, is, it can be automatically managed from the dashboard, and the new, so new version of the software can be automatically uh, you know, uploaded from the Coercity cluster. OK. So the Linux version, is that an RPM or Debian package? Or Correct. It's a self-archived, I mean, a self-extracting installer, which just installs. So now that we have added the source, so we'll jump into the, creating the backup job for this particular server. Protection job, add a protection job, servers, select the physical servers. So as you can see, there are several physical servers. Uh, so some of the, all the three of them are already protected. This is the one just that I just added. I select that. So one thing you can notice is that you know by default, it's automatic protection of all the volumes. So which means that you know, any new volume that is provisioned automatically gets picked up on the next backup cycle and gets protected. So if not, you can kind of choose to, uh, you know, individually back up the volumes too. Uh, let me leave it as automatic protection. So move to the next page once the obje object is selected. As you can notice, the policies that are seen here are exactly the same as whatever you guys saw with VMware. So the essence is that, uh, you know, it's a, you can use the same server policy to manage both physical servers as well as the virtual machines. Uh, same SLAs, similar schedules, and then same replication policies, et cetera. So the, the uh, summary is that essentially it's very consistent for virtual as well as physical. There is no need for differentiation. So let me select a bronze policy. It does a snapshot every day. Let me choose to run it in the night. So this is the view box that you guys have been hearing about. Essentially, inline dedupe is what I'll select, which is typical for most of the backup jobs. You want to, it gets, you know, a lot of dedupe and compression. So that's it. The physical job is created. Right? Can so, you view all of the times that all of your jobs that you've created run at? Sure. So, so let me just go to. So sorry, could, could you repeat that again? So, so you, you're manually entering what time that snapshot is taking place, Correct. but can you view what time all of those snapshots, like for all of your physical servers, what time they're all running at, Got it at okay. a glance? So let me show uh, a particular backup job run, go okay. through the details for that, and then as part of that, I'll, you can probably get the answer for the question. So this is a server that has been running for the last couple of days. 
uh, is an incremental backup. So as you can see, the total size of the volume was 20 GB. And then uh, the data that is read is 900 KB because of incremental backup. And one is one object, it's successful, right? So the details is here. So I'll, I'll highlight a couple of things. One is that uh, the, as soon as the coercity started, it connected with the agent. And then it worked with the, v the agent worked with the VSS snapshot, took the snapshot, and you can see that the data that is being backed up is incremental. And then finally, once the backup, once the data is pulled, so the notify backup completion is done to the VSS uh, you know, module, which tells all the applications that, hey, the backup is complete. And then finally, the snapshot is released. So this log is kept for every backup run that is run in the system. So you can exactly know what time it ran and what time it uh, you know, completed, et cetera, what is the status. And further, there are reports in the system, which kind of tells you uh, what, 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 the exact, or what is the summary for last, last week, you know, how many schedules ran, how many schedules completed, how many servers completed, et cetera. And, 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 and most of these reports are exposed to REST API. You can build your own reports too. And they, can those be emailed to you, like when there's failures and stuff like that? Correct. So you know, it, it can be set at a policy level as well, saying you know what what needs to be emailed, what needs to be you know alerted, SNMP alerts, etc. So the same policy can be applied to all the backup jobs. That way, you get to control, uh, you know, uh, get to apply this for all the backup jobs in the mm -hmm. system. Okay. Okay. So now the other important part of production, which is recovery. So let me go over to the recovery uh, workflows of the physical servers. So these are the recover options. Reco you can recover files and folders, you know, directly back to the source, etc. That is very similar to that works very similar to VMware that Damien showcased. And this is a new feature that was introduced, that was released, which is recovering as a mount point. Uh, let me just show you guys that. So before I show that, let me also connect to the server that was protected as part of the job. So this is the server. <coughs> So the D drive, the 20 GB volume, was the one that you guys saw the backup job runs for. So let me search for the server here. So this is a Windows physical server. So 209, so this shows, hey, where essentially uh, this flow is to take the volume that was backed up and mount it as an wall instant mount, instantly mount that volume on any physical server that is running, where the agent is running. So I'll select 209, back to the same server. And the other option that you can do here is to kind of pick any of the snapshots, any of the backup job runs, in other words. So here's the D drive that I want to recover. So again, a quick switch to the server. Uh, let me create this task and go back to the server. So as you can see, a Z drive popped up. Right? So what it means is that the, the backup job run that was, uh, you know, that, that had run here, the snapshot that I selected, so showed up here as a new volume, right? Like it, it instantly gave, gives access to any of the backup job runs that have run on Coercity platform. So, and then this can be used for, you know, any kinds of recovery, used for running analytics on that, or used for running test and dev workload on that, right? Like, you know, what, I just want to kind of highlight that Z drive here is running off of the Coercity as the data store. And a couple of things that, uh, three things that make this possible, three of the Coercity features that make this possible. Number one, it's the SnapFS file system, which, is, uh, which gives instant access to any of the backup job runs, so which we saw earlier during the architecture. Right? Every snapshot is fully hydrated, so which means that you can access it at any point of time instantly. And two, the SMB capabilities, so all the views uh, or data stores on Coercity can be accessed as an SMB share, so which is being leveraged here. And lastly, the backup job run, uh, the backup as part of the back, physical server backup, the data that is backed up for the volumes is stored in VHD or VHDX formats. So VHD or VHDX is the Microsoft standard for storing virtual hard disks, right? Equivalent of VMDK, if you may. So. So which, what, what that enables is to kind of attach the volumes instantaneously to the Microsoft subsystem, and which is what you guys are seeing. The Z drive, D drive that is backed up is stored as VHD and instantly made available as Z drive, you know, through the Coercity. I have a couple questions. Sure. First one is if you've, if you've set it up to automatically protect volumes and you restore this volume, Correct. then this volume also get protected? No. So we skip that. So we know that it is coming through Coercity. It, okay. it has a specific ID. We know that this is the ID. 
right? They're going to be skip it as part of. Okay. A good question. Uh, the second one is we heard earlier that the it's automatically storage v motion to primary storage Correct. at the time that it's restored. Correct. I'm assuming that's the same for this. Correct. So that is something that is in in a in a present release that is not done. It's right. available here. In the next release, we are making that like you know you can migrate this volume over to. Currently, the user can do it manually himself. Okay. But the point is that we are making it automatic in the next release. Okay. As far as restore options, uh -huh. is there end user capability to restore files? Correct. So let me just do a quick. It's exactly the same as what you guys saw with VMware. Uh, you know, you can select the restore. You know, select the restore files. Let me just show a quick preview of that. So recover here, recover files or folders, right? Let me just show the other view that you had. Damien showed you guys the searching ability of the files. Let me just show you uh, guys. This is the 209 server that we just saw. So you can browse that to you know, any of the files here, right? And you can just select it and uh, you know, proceed to recovering back to the server. So it's exactly the same as what with VMware, you know, which is, this is probably the most common uh, use case that the admins would have to deal with, so hence it, it is part of the workflow. Can you configure permissions to limit the ability to download that locally and only restore to the um, to Correct. That location? So it is coming up as part of the RBAC access, etc., okay. to kind of limit that to specific user and each end operation. Okay. So right now it's the admin that has to initiate a recovery. And there is a restore user uh, who can be configured with only restore capabilities. Okay. What if a uh, a user has mounted, or what if a server has mounted a SMB file share? Can you do, for for example, using the, the Windows Volume uh, Restore or the Shadow Restore? Now, this is only for like local, locally mounted volumes, not the SMB shares. Right. Okay. What can you do natively inside of the OS? Sorry. Can you restore? Do restores from the OS itself, or do you have to go through the console? So you have to restore within the console. 